free liquidation. Just one thing. Just what do you think about volatile liquidation? A company itself goes into what they liquidate it voluntarily. Uh, <clears throat> a voluntary liquidation is a self-imposed winding up and a solution, dissolution of a company that has been approved by a shareholder. Such decision will happen once a company, company's leadership decides that the company has no reason to operate, continue in operating. That is the purpose, the, there is no purpose in operating. So the company will dissolve. That is, there is no use in running the company, though. So, the company management will decide to wind up the company, that is, voluntary liquidation. There can be reasons. What are the reasons? Let's see. When the entity has formed for a particular purpose, that the purpose has been achieved, so the company can dissolve, can wind up. Or when the article of the uh, article provides that an entity shall be liquidated on the happening of an event, some event has been occurred so that the company cannot rent further, so they can wind up or unable to carry on the business. There may be heavy losses. The company cannot further rent, so they can voluntarily liquidate themselves. What are the modes? There are three modes: forced or compulsory liquidation. This will occur when the go court or uh, NCLT will tell to tell, tell the company to wind up that's forced or compulsory liquidation. Members voluntarily wind up is uh, member will decide that there is no use in running the company. So the member will members will approach the management. Uh, they will wind up the company. Creditors voluntary wind up is uh, there is huge debt. The creditor felt that the, the company cannot repay its uh, debt. So the creditor may approach and they can force to wind up the company, wind up the company that is creditors voluntary liquidation. So they will appoint a, in liquidation, they will appoint a liquidator. Liquidator is a person who will act behalf of the company, who is a, who sell all the asset and settle all the liability. He will maintain an account called liquidator's account. When uh, ca cash is released, uh, first thing he will keep these charges uh, separately. Order of payment is, that is uh, legal charges. All the legal charges and liquidation expense are paid first. Uh, then, then dividend holders uh, thing will be paid. Then creditors, creditors, there is a preferential creditor, unsecured creditor. Uh, then they will pay for preference shareholder. Then only they will pay for equity shareholder. This is the order of payment they will pay. Overriding preferential payment, that is worksman due. If any worksman due is there, that will be that will be considered as a preferential payment. That is in creditor, preferential creditor. Uh, it's like a four month salary into 12 month, only for maximum of 15 members only we can pay. That too, maximum of 20,000. This is the limit. Uh, this does not include the director's payment uh, and uh, rent for good That's on, That does not come under preferential creditors. They are unsecured creditors. If there is no money, they can't pay. But uh, for wages and salary, four months, 15 members into 200 per month. They can, uh, that is uh, uh, maximum limit they can pay or 20,000, whichever is higher. This is preferential creditor. These this people come under preferential creditor. Others are unsecured creditors. Then, in preferential creditor, these are the things that is government tax, salary wages, holiday remuneration, contribution under ESA, compensation in respect of death, PF, pension, gratuity, expense of investigation. This, are, this also comes under preferential creditor. Before unsecured creditor, these things will be paid. In, in taxation aspect, uh, any distribution made to the shareholder of a company on its liquidation to the extent which the distribution is attributed to the accumulated profit of the company immediately before its liquidation, whether capital occur or not, deemed dividend. That is what is the, the, if the company have accumulated profit that much distribution to its shareholder is considered as a deemed dividend as per section 222 and shall be taxed in IFOS. Dividend does not include a distribution made in respect of any share issued for full cash consideration, whether the holder of the share is not entitled in the event of liquidation to participate in the surplus asset. 
that is uh, for the shareholder has paid 10 rupee uh, the company has repaid it 10 rupee so uh, if the company have any surplus asset uh, the shareholders is not entitled to pass, uh, participate in that surplus asset. only the if the share price has been paid they can't uh, participate in the surplus even though if the company have excess money they can't contribute i mean they can't claim second point is a distribution made in accordance with sub clause is so far as such distribution is attributable to the capitalized profits of the company representing bonus share allotted to its equity shareholder that is uh, when a company issue a bonus share it does not comes under dividend that is there is because there is no change in the asset of the company just the reserve is converted into shares so it does not comes under deemed dividend then accumulated profit do not include capital gains earned by the company any capital gain is earned by the company that does not accounts to accumulated profit then for company when asset of a company are distributed to its shareholder on its liquidation such distribution shall not regarded as transfer and not taxable for the company when the assets are transferred to the company transferred by the company to its shareholder it does not it does not uh, it's it's not a transfer first so capital gain provision does not come for a shareholder when a shareholder on its liquidation receives any money or any other asset from the company he shall chargeable to the income tax under the head capital gain in respect of when a shareholder on its liquidation receives any money or any asset, other asset from the company he shall be chargeable to income tax under the head capital gain in respect of the money so received or the market value of the asset on the date of liquidation as reduced by the amount assessed as dividend that is for a company uh, when asset is transferred it's not a capital gain but for a shareholders it is a capital gain uh, it will be calculated that uh, actually up for until the accumulated profit it is deemed dividend over and above that it's uh, regarded as capital gain for a foreign investor section 9 of the act says that any dividend paid by indian company outside india shall be deemed to accrue or arise in india so the shareholder will be charged to capital gain tax further tds and withholding of tax provision may also be applicable on the asset distribution to shareholders if dtwa is any it will also be applicable okay once again until 31st march 2017 company acts uh, says about voluntary liquidation after that voluntary winding up under company act 2000 stands omitted due to section 2 of insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 and section 59 which deals with voluntary winding up covered under chapter 5 of insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 that is after 14 2017 company act doesn't speak about uh, voluntary liquidation insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 section 59 speak uh, speaks about the voluntary liquidation uh, what are the provisions let's see a declaration of solvency shall be given by majority of director delhi verified by an affidavit stating that they have made an inquiry into the affairs of the company and they have formed an opinion that the company has no debt or that it will not be able to pay its debt in full from the proceeds of the asset to be sold in the voluntary winding up of the company is not being liquidated that and the company is not being liquidated to defraud any person that is the company will not able to pay its debt and also the company is not liquidated due to defraud any person then audited financial statement and record of the business operation of the corporate person for the previous two years or since its corporation incorporation whichever is later that is their audited financial statement they are saying report of the valuation of asset the corporate person if any that is uh, the asset will be evaluated by a registered valuer if a company owes any debt approval of creditor representing two third of the value of the debt of the company on resolution passed for voluntary liquidation of the company and the appointment of liquidator within seven days from the date of meeting that is uh, the creditor uh, the company owes any debt and the creditors have to one two third of the creditor have to accept 
if they accept for warrant liquidation the company has to appoint liquidator within 7 days from the meeting a meeting of board of director of the company be convened for taking on record the declaration of solvency given by director of the company section 173 of companies act that is uh, section 170 section 173 is uh, section 173 is uh, a company should uh, held a board meeting within 30 days of its incorporation and four meetings in a year minimum four meetings that is uh, section 173 uh, voluntary liquidation of the company subject to approval of the member by passing a special resolution and creditors and taking on record declaration of solvency. Appointment of insolvency professional to act as a liquidator and fixation of, of remuneration along with other terms and conditions subject to approval of member by passing a special resolution and creditor. That is, uh, if the creditor to the accept, they have to appoint an insolvency professional that is uh, who act as a liquidator for selling the asset and settling their liabilities. Uh, and liquidators' uh, terms and conditions will also be fixed in that uh, resolution itself. Fixation of time, date, place, agenda of general meeting, everything. For convincing general meeting by giving notice in writing, proposing the special resolution with an explanation. This is for every meeting. There should be a, a notice should be given within twenty before twenty one days. Clear notice should be given. Filing a form MGT 14 with the register of company within 30 days from the date of pausing resolution for registration of the following documents. Board resolution for approval of voluntary liquidation of the company and taking on record declaration of solvency. Board resolution passed for appointment of insolvency to act as a liquid. That is, uh, they have to, in MGT 14, they have to file the board resolution for, passed for the voluntary liquidation. Convince member meeting within maximum of four weeks declared of solvency and pass special resolution for voluntary liquidation and appoint an insolvency professional to act as a liquidator. After the meeting, within maximum of four weeks, they should appoint a liquidator. Liquidator will make a public announcement in form A of Schedule 1 of Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India Regulation 2017 within five days from the from his appointment, inviting stakeholder to submit their claims within 30 days from the date of commencement of liquidation. That is, the liquidator have to, uh, have to submit a form form A of Schedule 1 of insolvency and bankruptcy within 5 days from his appointment. Liquidator shall disclose his relationship with professionals engaged by him through, the rele through relevant web portal of insolvency professional agency within 3 days of such appointment. That is, if uh, liquidator cannot do all, uh, will not know everything. So, he will appoint any other professional to validate the things. So, the relationship with that person, he has to disclose uh, within three days of his appointment in the portal, web portal. Clarification issued by Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India regarding filing of intimation with Income Tax Department within one month from the date of passing a special resolution regarding voluntary wind up of the company and obtaining no objections. That is, uh, within one month, the when uh, insolvency and bankruptcy board of India uh, issue a notice that should be filed with the income tax department within one month. That is no objection certificate. Liquidator shall uh, will open a bank account within one month of the passing the resolution special resolution in voluntary liquidation. He, he will receive all the money. All the payment will be made through that bank account. Bank account. Creditors should submit the claims within 30 days. That, that is the company, how much uh, debt the company owes to the creditor. The liquid, uh, within 30 days, they should be within 30 days. And from that, within 30 days, the liquidator shall verify the claim submitted from the, the liquidator shall ver verify the claim submitted by creditors. So the liquidator shall reject or accept the thing. The liquidator will prepare a preliminary report of the company to the company within 45 days from the commencement of liquidation that is when he appoints within 45 days he will uh, he will prepare a report uh, basic report that is the capital structure of the company the estimates of the asset and the liability based on the books of the company whether he intends to make any further inquiry into any matters to the promotion formation or failure of the company or the conduct of the business thereof and the proposed plan of action for carrying out the liquidation, including the timeline within which he proposed to carry out 
an estimated lick that is he will prepare a report about the company that is uh, within 45 day he should give that to the company the liquidator shall prepare the li the liquidator shall prepare a list of stakeholders within 45 day from the last date of receipt of claim starting therein that is the amount of claim admitted extent of due to which the debt dues are secured unsecured details of stakeholder proof admitter or rejected in the that is within 45 day they have to prepare uh, prepare a list how much the company needs to pay how much they received everything uh, the liquidator will prepare a preliminary report the liquidator shall release the asset and distribute the proceeds from the realization within 6 months from the receipt of realization to the stakeholders that is uh, when uh, assets are sold uh, the, when the company assets are sold and he realize the money within 6 month he have to pay and settle to his stakeholder first the as i said first the liquidation cost shall be directed before such distribution that is the legal expenses everything he incur the liquidator incur the liquidator shall end over to complete the liquidation process within 12 months from the liquidation commencement date in the event of process continuing for more than 12 months the liquidator shall hold a meeting of the contributors of the corporate person within 50 days from the end of the 12 month from the liquidation commencement date and the every succeeding 12 months till dissolution of the corporate person and shall present an annual status that is the when the liquidation process starts within 12 months he have to complete if not end of the 12 month within 15 days he have to hold a meeting uh, and he have to report uh, one the report which consists of the uh, one year actions so they can extend the meeting this will recur if the process continue again for more than 12 months they will hold uh, 15 days uh, after completion of 12 months within 15 days they will hold a meeting and they can extend the process on complete uh, completion of the liquidation process the liquidator shall prepare the final reporting consist of uh, audited accounts of liquidation showing receipts and payments pertaining to liquidation since the liquidation commencement date a statement demonstrating that the assets of the corporate person has been disposed of the debt of the corporate person has been discharged to the satisfaction of the creditor no litigation is pending against the corporate person or sufficient provision has been made to meet the obligation arising from the pending litigation that is once the liquidation proper process gets over he will prepare audited accounts and it, it will shows the what are the assets which have been disposed and the money realized and the payment which has been made everything will be in that that is liquidator statement a sales statement in respect of all asset containing the realized value cost of realization the manner and mode of sale an explanation for the shortfall if the value is realized is less than the value assigned by the register valuer and the, to the person to the person to whom the sale is made that is the sales this this is just a statement this which consists of the asset value how the asset is sold to whom it has been sold about the transaction detail everything will be this the liquidator shall send the final uh, report for with to the register on the board the liquidator su submit the final report to the adjudicating authority along with the application under section 597 the liquidator will send this uh, final report to the register and the board also he will uh, send it to the adjudicating authority adjudicating authority is something uh, who is a high official or in case of uh, court or NS nclt has been forced to liquidation to whom this will be sent before the order of order of dissolution is passed the liquidator shall apply to nclt for an order to pay into the company liquidation account in the public account of india any unclaimed proceeds of liquidation or undistributed asset or any other balance payable to the stakeholder in his hand on the date of order of dissolution whether the tribunal if the tribunal is satisfied the nclt shall pa pass the order for liquidation that is a, the company has been winded up that is a, the nclt will uh, tell that the company is winded up it's like an A certificate we can say the copy of order shall be filed with the register once the nclt has uh, given that uh, the, it will be filed with the register of company and insolvency and bank corruption board of india and insolvency professional agency within 14 days from such order the document which have been uh, 
used in the voluntary liquidation that is the all the valuation report everything should be kept at least 8 year after dissolution with either himself or with an information utility that is you have to hold the document for 8 years and these are the forms which which need to be used uh, which used in the voluntary liquidation that is uh, form a of schedule 1 is public announcement form b of schedule 1 is proof proof of claim by operation creditor except workman and employees other than workman and employee all other creditor will reporting form b of schedule 1 form c of schedule 1 is proof of by a financial creditor form d of schedule 1 is proof of claim by workman and employee form e of schedule 1 is proof proof of claim by authorized representative of workman and employee form f of schedule 1 is proof of claim by other stakeholders Well, just an example if the money realized is not uh, sufficient to pay all the liability means uh, first they will pay legal charges liquidation expense debenture holder in creditor they will first pay preferential creditor unsecured creditor uh, after paying preferential holder for equity shareholder the money will be pending if the money is not sufficient to pay to the equity shareholder uh, they have equity shareholders have to bear the losses in this gst aspect uh, once the company has been winded up uh, they have to cancel the registration so in this gst aspect i have covered about cancellation of registration in in what and what are the cases the cancellation will come uh, section 29 of one the proper officer may, may either on his own motion or on an application filed by the registered person or by his legal heir in case of death of such person cancel the registration in such manner within a such period as may be prescribed having regard to the circumstances where the business have been discontinued or transferred fully for any reason including death of the proprietor amalgamated with other legal entity demerged in this case uh, the registration has to be cancelled there is any if the constitution of the business has changed because uh, the business has been uh, started for one purpose and it has been changed so the registration will be cancelled the taxable person is not liable to register in this case the registration will be cancelled section 292 of gst is say, the proper officer may cancel the registration of person from such date including any ret retrospective date as he may deem fit and the registered person have contravened such provision of the act or the rules made there under as may be prescribed a person paying tax under section 10 has not furnished uh, the return for three consecutive tax period any registered person other than a person spe specified clause in clause b has not furnished return for continuous six period of six month continuous uh, period of six month any person who have taken voluntary registration under section 25 has not commenced business uh, within six months from the date of registration the if the registration is obtained by mean of fraud willful misstatement or suppression of fact in these circumstances gst registration will be cancelled that's all thank you Any questions? Oscar, I have uh, two questions. Yes. Uh, one is the technical one, the process which you explained. I have a doubt. The doubt is that uh, uh, the preferential creditor, the secured creditors may have some securities with them, right? So, whether uh, the uh, liquidator has the right to receive, recover that security from the third party. Or the liquidator does not have the right to receive that security which has been provided by the company to the third party. For example, uh, in case of loan from bank by uh, giving the security like land or anything, whether the liquidator has the right to recover that land from that uh, third party and uh, uh, recover uh, proceeds from it and pay that creditor, or he has no right. No, he can't. Uh, if uh, in, in this scenario, if the bank has the bank has given loan to the company by pledging the mm, yes. pledging the property that property will be belongs to the bank so the liquidator cannot uh, he cannot he has no right to recover no, that he can't that is that's they are secured creditors comes under this comes under secured creditors okay the balance portion only he can sell and he can he can realize and settle the liabilities
And uh, my second question is, you have beautifully explained all the process of voluntary liquidation. My question is that, why is there a need for voluntary liquidation? What is the purpose? As I stated in the starting, there, well, there are three reasons. Uh, once there, uh, the company has no use in draining, it incurred huge loss. Uh, like uh, Satyam's camp, the top management and involved uh, heavy fraud uh, something. The, they can't continue. Or uh, they uh, started the business for a particular purpose that has been uh, achieved so they can liquidate. Another one is they will... Uh, unable to carry on business means that is uh, they don't have any future in that uh, field so they can close the business uh, is there any other possibility so that the company can work uh, or only restricted to these three reasons no it's not restricted to the, these three reasons there can be other circum if they legally done something the court will intervene and they will force to liquidate that comes under Forced or compulsory liquidation. Okay. Voluntary means if the company fails, that there is no use in running. That is the top management or the members. Uh, there is no use or they they are not able to take anything. Just the running the business. There is no use, so they can voluntarily liquidate the company. Okay. Any other question? Okay, thank you all.